It's been called the diamond of the dirt tracks or the house that Forrest built. Welcome to the Lucas Oil Speedway for the General Tire Fall Nationals presented by k &N Filters. They're big, they're mean, they're nasty. They put out 5,000 horsepower. They burn pure alcohol. This is the funny car class of tractor pulling. Hello, everybody. I'm Stephen Cox, and welcome to Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri. Now, in addition to the unlimited super stocks today, we also have another treat for you, the 10,000-pound diesels. It's the pro stock tractors. We just call them the smokers. It's all coming up next on the Lucas Oil Champions Tour. We load up the sled, and I am joined in the booth by our expert analyst, Rick Carlson. Also, Lisa Tatum will be on the broadcast crew, and Doc Riley is standing by on pit road. Doc? Nah, Stevens, big boys, toys. This is the toy box crew right here, and these guys are getting ready to button things up so we can go unlimited super stock pulling. What is an unlimited super stock? Well, this is really the backbone of truck and tractor pulling. These vehicles weighing 8,000 pounds, 650 cubic inches the limit. They all run on alcohol. Now, 10, 15 years ago, these guys all belched diesel smoke, but these are the clean air machines, and they produce an awful lot of horsepower. The points race very, very tight. Larry Roberts, who owns all the toys in the big toy box, is right now sitting on top of the points parade. We'll see what transpires here as we go unlimited super stock pulling on the Lucas Oil Champions Tour. Thanks, Doc. Jeff Hurt is up next on Running Bear All-American. And Rick, I know he's had some problems this year just being behind the eight ball. Not so much mechanical problems, but he didn't even compete in the first two events of this year. Well, new tractor finally getting it ready. And he's a little late. He's buckling up. He's already hooked to the sled, but now getting buckled up, strapped in, the safety equipment on. Now he is ready to go. Missing a couple of events, well, it really hurts in the points, Chase, but you lose all those runs where you could gather data to make that tractor run quicker. A little bit of smoke off the tires, spinning them, and now well, not a good run. 247.98 feet, 300 is a full pull today. Now that brings us to Jordan Lustig. Here's a former world champion with some mechanical issues going right now. Brett Long driving the big toy. Larry Roberts normally in the driver's seat, but Brent Long climbing in there, subbing for him this time. He is ready. This is the tractor that is your current points leader. We talk about this course. They normally have some history to go over, but this time there is none. It's the first time they've had a pulling course at the Diamond of the Dirt Tracks. We'll see what type of a distance we want to look for. Remember that 247 is out there. This is going to be a good indicator of how the track is going to play out this evening. And nobody has any notes to go off of. As you said, it's our very first time here at this particular track, 255 feet. That makes 247 a few moments ago look an awful lot better. The big toy, Brent Long, really comes out good. He gets into the throttle very slowly as we watch the general tire replay. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Now he gets into it. And you can see the tires starting to spin. I wonder if the big tires are getting up on top of the dirt, not giving any traction. He moves toward the center of the lane but still nowhere near that 300-foot mark. Good enough for the lead, but I don't think it was all they're looking for. Brent got a top five run early this year, some hard times in the middle of the year, and now he's looking to get back in the top half of the field once more. Joe Kwiatkowski is up next on Taking Care of Business. The green tractor, Kwiatkowski the driver. Here's a former champ that can read a dirt track better than anyone. We'll see what this puller is able to do. We've seen 255 feet, 247. Let's see what taking care of business the green machine can do. Larry Roberts' tractor turned in the 255, and oddly enough, in Evansville, Indiana, earlier this year, Joe finished sixth, just one spot behind Larry Roberts, and 233 is going to put him two behind him this time around. Desperado, Sid Brown, Silver Spring, New York, coming out. I'm surprised. I don't know what's going on with this track. You would think these pullers would be up around 300 feet. Right now, they're having trouble struggling to get to 250. Broughton, well, another experienced puller. I don't know what he's going to do. Servos whining, squealing, the tires smoking and spinning, and no distance at all. 
223.63, another big disappointment this time out of Sid Broughton. That brings us to Aaron Hull on the MMG 1000 Minneapolis Moline out of Wisconsin. All he needs is a 256, and that will put him on the point. But that's looking pretty tough to do. Well, we haven't seen anybody else do that. This is a tractor that really can. The yellow machine coming out. Hull is now strapped in tight, getting the RPM up where he wants it, taking all the slack out of that pulling chain. Now let's watch. He is very slowly going to ease into the throttle, I would imagine. We're not going to see much tire speed until he gets out 50 to 60 feet. Oh, a little bit earlier than some of the others. I don't know if his change in plans or style is going to help. We're going to find out it looks pretty good now, but all of a sudden it got heavy. He did get on it hard and very soon, 239 feet, a bit of a disappointment, but you know, you've got to try something because nobody else can get past that 255 mark. Jordan Lustig on the silver bullet, the former world champion when we return to the Lucas Oil Pro Bowling League. Jordan Lustig, the former world champion, sitting on the silver bullet right now. He finished second to Tim Howell on Ryan's toy just a few rounds ago, and this guy is always a threat. Even when you're guessing the racetrack, you can't count out Jordan Lustig. The silver bullet, it has power. Jordan and the crew have experience. You would expect them to come out and just fly, but all they're doing is spinning the tires. You see smoke coming off of it earlier, and no distance at all. In fact, that's exactly what we didn't expect to see. 215 feet places him dead last. And as we watch Brent Long getting ready to hook up his own machine to the sled, let's check in with Doc Riley. Jordan, tough night of pulling, man. This is, uh, again, first time ever on this track. Just your thoughts on a run. Uh, tough sledding out there. We, we moved all the weight we could back. We did some other things with the air pressure and stuff. Just, just never could get a hold. I drove it out the whole way. I never did give it full throttle. Uh, just couldn't get a hold of nothing. The track's just extremely hard. And, and uh, the big wheel speed with the wide tires, just, just don't hook up on it. And that's important, Rick, because you can see that. He said he moved the weights as far back as he possibly could to try to get as much balance because there's just no bite on those rear tires. As we looked at Brent Long's machine, we could see that he has really lowered the air pressure, and it is bouncing and hopping. I don't think this is what he wanted. Whatever it was, didn't work. You might as well shut it down 193.62 feet. That is too far for a repull, so his day is going to be finished. Let's take another look at it and figure out where it went wrong because nobody has figured this track out yet. Well, it hooked up and released, and the front ends up in the air, bounces down, it takes all the weight off the back tires. He's all over the place. And Well, his first pass was good, and this one, nothing to ride home about for the engine builder. Tim Howell is up next on Ryan's toy out of Wilmington, Ohio, and he is going to look to top the mark that everybody is after, 255.97 feet. Tim thinks he can do it. He won this thing at Evansville. Well, more uh, tractors coming out of the big toy box. Howell, without a doubt, could pull with anyone. Let's see what he's done with the weights. As you look up at the front of the tractor, there is almost nothing there. One weight on each end, and that is it. A few on the side, and he's still spinning the tires. Moving around the pulling course, the weight comes up and, well, still no good. Pulling on ice out there, 213.76 feet, and interestingly enough, it's getting worse out there, not better. You can see it's wet up on top, but not below us. We see everyone with the great big tires. Maybe it's time for some to try little tiny ones, see if they can get through some of the loose stuff and get down where there's some traction. I don't know what else they're going to try, Stephen. We saw Jordan Lustig try the throttle very slowly. We saw Aaron Holt dump it quickly as he possibly could, and that's exactly what Dave Marino is going to try, and nothing so far has worked. Show me showdown. Well, that's not working. He's spinning the tires. It does not sound like he's really under much power, moving all over the course, trying to grab the brakes, bouncing, hopping, and 188 feet. Still no success on this tough-to-read race course. Patrice Baudrea is up next. He needs 255 feet. Lisa Tatum is standing by with the Dixie Chopper's Puller's Profile. Well, he's got a funny name and a funny-looking tractor. We're here with Patrice Boudre, the Canadian with the crazy Canuck. Now, Patrice, how did you get into pulling? I uh, went to my first tractor pull. I was eight months old. That's in 1970, so that's been 36 years. We actually started pulling in 1984 with a, a pro-stock tractor back then. And I've uh, graduated since to uh, regional level and, uh, and now national level. And now why come down from Canada down to the U.S. to pull at the national level? 
Well, obviously, that's where the best machinery is. If we want to be able to compare ourselves to the best, we have to come to uh, the PPL circuit. So uh, that's why we drive all this way from Quebec, Canada. That's uh, 26 hours to be here in, uh, in Missouri. Wow, and an STX 500. Now, that's not something I think that Americans are very familiar with. Tell me a little bit more about your model of tractor. That's a Steiger tractor. It's actually a four-wheel drive tractor used on the farms. And uh, the engine we're using was in a Steiger tractor, an old-style Steiger tractor. So we kept uh, the idea of the Steiger line and went with that model. 26 hours. You gotta want to be here awful bad to drive 26 hours and the work he's done on the, even the engine. Well, that's it. The engine starts out much bigger than the class allows. They have to sleeve it and make it smaller so it'll fit within the class limits. The long drive. Now he'd like to get a long pull. Can he do it? No. Look at the methanol clearing as the uh, shuts off the engine. John Evans will back up the big toy and get ready to pull. Meanwhile, Doc is standing by with Patrice. What's just your take on a track? Uh, the track is very, very hard. It's, uh, it, it's very, very tough to drive on a track like that because the way those engines are, there's no halfway. It's either all in or all out. The turbochargers, the way they work, they just give it all or don't give anything. So it's hard to, to pedal it, to half throttle it the way, all the way down the track. That's what I tried to do and what everybody else tried to do today to find the right combination, but it just seemed not to work. Nobody's found it yet. John Evans is the last guy with an opportunity to find the magic key to unlock the Lucas Oil Speedway's brand new dirt here. And he's run mid-pack most of the year, so it's his chance to step forward. Has to go by 255 feet. It looks good here. And really, that's not bad. It's not going to win, but 230 feet looks better by the minute. Doc is standing by with the winner. Well, congratulations, first of all. Tough, tough class, but it seems like the Missouri boys may have had the edge. Well, I don't know about that. I think luck played part of this deal and, and draw track position. Uh, so I, I think that's a big part of it. Of course, uh, having Larry's tractor to drive, that's, that's a big plus, you know. It, it really is a big plus. But, you know, you've got a lot of experience at this. You know a lot about the engines, about setups and things of that nature. If you had to do it all over again or if anybody else had to do it all over again, do you think you could have got further down the track? Or is it just one of those things where you guys got too much horsepower for the track? I think the tires just this didn't work out there, the big tire tonight. I think maybe the, you know, the pro stocks will do a good job and the two-wheelers will do a good job. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, the earlier you ran in the day, the better off you were. Brent Long and Larry Roberts, the big toy, came in first place. And the very first guy to pull today, Jeff Hurt, and Running Bear All-American came in second. Larry is at the top of the heap so far as points are concerned. Tim Howell, a close second at 299, and Jordan Lustig in third.